Welcome to Nintendo Engineers. I'm your host, Chris Dices, and yes, we've got the cappy hat on for the last time, I would say, and uh, we are doing the Super Mario Odyssey review. I've played a lot of this game in the last 24 hours, and my opinion is, is extremely high, but we'll, we've got to get into it because there's a lot of content to um, get into. Uh, it's a big game. It's a very, very big game. It's a very interesting experience, this game. So we'll get right into the review right now, and uh, we'll see what I think about it. And for one last time, we'll throw that cappy hat. So it's been about four years since uh, Super Mario 3D World came to the Wii U. And I was a little disappointed by it about because it was very ho-hum. Um, the storyline and things like that. And the game itself played well and, and played really nicely. But I was disappointed by certain things of it. However, Super Mario Odyssey is a very familiar vibe to Super Mario 64, which is now basically... 21 years old and a lot of the, the changes and the um, sort of remixes of, of things and that how they sort of lace the old and the new together has always been well done by Nintendo and it takes it to a next level here um, the music is outstanding as typical Mario with um, now theme songs added to it and the music once again keeps on improving there's some really outstanding moments here and there which I want to highlight, and there will be some videos, I guess, on the YouTube channel later on. With uh, the Cappy, the, all the, the different um, changes you can make, I mean, these are really the new power-ups. Instead of uh, having your normal power-ups in the Mario game, you now turn into uh, creatures and animals and enemies and that. I thought some of the highlights were um, turning into the frog was really good, the first one that you get into. Um, the T-Rex is obviously for show, um, it's a very fun animal to muck around with um, during your first real sort of true blue world, which is a bit larger than um, Cap Kingdom. I also was a fan of, which I won't reveal many spoilers, but um, one little one is you get, you can be a tank, an actual tank where you're going around shooting people and, well not people, shooting objects and things like that. And I thought that was a lot of fun. That was literally a blast. <coughs> Pun intended. And I thought a lot of the, the cap changes and the controls are very smooth and slick. Um, I felt there was some camera issues. A little annoying when I would, you know, fall off things. Because I couldn't quite see where I was going. So, but I think Murray games have always had a little bit like that. Even people complained about it on Galaxy. Which I can understand. So... With that, we'll go and look at the, the world's highlights. There are 15 worlds for you to um, get into, or we call them 15 kingdoms. And there's some real highlights there. Um, the first one, Cap Kingdom, I think is really cool. Has a bit of a Banjo-Kazooie music vibe to it. If you just sort of close your eyes and, and listen to it, you believe it could belong in a game series like that, or with Rare. Now... The other ones, the Sand Kingdom is pretty cool. I think it's a good starting one, but I think it's just not the the best of the best in this game. <clears throat> one of the smaller kingdoms, where you get a small, smaller amount of power moons, which is like your stars in this game, um, was okay. Um, was No, sorry. The Wooden Kingdom is probably one of my favourites. It has some of the, the best challenges, some of the best um, music in it too. So I was blown away by that world. And I thought that was really, really excellent. The other highlights are the Metro Kingdom, which is you probably saw in all sorts of trailers going around the city, which was a lot of fun. And it was good to see Mayor Pauline has been doing well for herself for the past 25, 30 years. Um... And with the storyline with that, it doesn't seem like she recognises him from decades ago. So, I don't know, you could, you know, the writers could say this is a different Pauline. But I think people like to think it's the same one from decades ago. Now, the storyline is pretty cool. Um, the whole Bowser going off to different uh, kingdoms, grabbing um, objects and items for his planned wedding with 
uh, Princess Peach, or basically is a forced marriage. <clears throat> and I thought the storyline of the ending was pretty cool, and we'll uh, talk about that just a little later on on this. Now, some of the, these great kingdoms, I think, don't do as well as the as others based on some poor challenges and and um, quests and things like that. I thought some of them were a bit a bit lazy or just a bit too easy um, to push over. And yeah, I think there's a little disappointment there, but I think um, overall I wasn't really disappointed by really any of the kingdoms. Some of the art style was impressive. I was impressed by uh, the Lost Kingdom, which was excellent. And some of the later ones, uh, Rain and Moon Kingdoms, are really nicely done. Some of the graphics and that. Now, talking about the worlds and that, the bosses in each one are probably some of the best made ones I've seen in the Mario game. They were very interesting. They kept me engaged and they kept me wanting to, to go on and, and battle these, these dudes and dudettes. And I was very impressed by it. I liked some of the mechanics that they did. They had to think a little bit, but it wasn't so bad at the end of the day. So, I, yeah, I, I really enjoyed those aspects quite a lot. Now, the, the storyline I felt was fine, controls, things like that. Um, one other little, little disappointing thing. I felt the game was quite easy. I pushed through this game pretty hard, and it was fairly easy to complete. Didn't take too long as, as I expected. There's a lot of kingdoms and a lot of content to get through. So there was a little bit of a disappointment for me, um, but I do have to remember that Mario is very much a game for all ages um, compared to Breath of the Wild, and yes, this game will be compared to it for um, for a long, long time. Um, Breath of the Wild is definitely much harder, where Mario is sort of a game that's built and sort of seen as a game for all ages. And I can understand that. I can understand that entirely. So I don't think that's such a problem. I think the hard part is when the game finishes and you want to explore those additional kingdoms. Now, I don't know what those additional kingdoms are. I felt like completing the storyline <coughs> and seeing most of those kingdoms, I can judge for myself what a game is like. And I've had a bit of a taste of what that post content is like. Um, overall, there was 15 kingdoms and you would not believe 909 power moons. I think you can get pretty much through about 150 to 200 moons to finish the storyline and there's another 700 for you to complete. Getting these power moons can range from very, very simple just find and, and it's there to some quite elaborate challenges and uh, levels to get through, which can be quite hard. So I, I felt that was pretty, pretty cool. Now, I think for some people that might be annoyed by um, how easy the game was and data and getting through the storyline itself, I do feel like it is like Breath of the Wild in terms of it's really about exploring and, and collecting objects and unlocking things and seeing different kingdoms and that. Um, so you do need to explore every inch of the, of the world. Because there'll be some power moons available from the start of the game and then from the post content um, more sort of appear and easier to find and stuff like that. So while the main storyline probably took me, I don't know, 15 hours or so or a little less, um, the post content is probably going to take me, you know, quite a couple hundred hours plus. Yeah, there's there's stacks and stacks and stacks. Now, there's certain things like little races that you can do and a ranking mode um, based on doing little races and you can um, upload your times online to compete against your friends. So that is a good um, element of the game. The other one is the snapshot mode, which you can take pictures and things like that and you can sort of move the camera around and zoom in, zoom out. I, know. I thought that was a great feature too. I thought, yep, that's a big tick too. Now, the amiibo function ability is interesting. I put in the 8-bit Mario, and you do get a costume from that. But you have to find out what that costume is for yourself in the game. 
Um, so a few other amiibos gives you sort of coins and they mostly help you f give you hints in finding power moons. There's over 900 of them, so you do need as much help as you can. <coughs> uh, but there are certain amiibos that will give you certain stuff. Now, if I can remember off the top of my head, I think Bowser helps you find special coins in which are only persistent to each kingdom. Mario gives you temporary invincibility and P Princess Preach gives you an extra life sort of vow. So you get three hits and then you find another vow and it goes up to six or nine or 12. And then you sort of, you know, battle on like that. So it's pretty standard to, to previous Mario games. Now moving on to the coins that we were talking about, apart from power moons, you've got to find sort of 50 to 100 coins in each of these worlds, these special sort of designed ones. Now you trade them in for items, so for costumes or stickers that you can put on your Odyssey ship. Now the Odyssey ship is fantastic, I think it's really cool and a lot of fun. And you can get um, ob um, ornaments that you can put inside your ship, I believe. And some of them are really good and they're all really sort of throwbacks to previous Mario games and that, you know, Golf Mario, Cooking Mario, Dr. Mario, stuff like that. So there's a lot of costumes for you to purchase with your normal yellow coins and ones with your special sort of purple type coins uh, which there's a different currency in each kingdom so that which is cool i love the costumes um in the post content or i will say about the post content is it is the absolute perfect reward for long-term mario fans who have been waiting for this day to come you're going to get exactly what you've been wishing for. So, apart from all that, um, wow. Um, there was a lot to take in. And I think it's one of those games where you're literally on this odyssey. You're going all around the world. And it's like, it's like a whirlwind journey for the storyline because you're sort of whipping around the world trying to chase Bowser. And once that, that storyline is complete... Now you can sort of take your time and 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 um, pick away all the the power moons after, and that's where you can you know really take in the game. And I think that's where I'm going to really appreciate the different worlds, and really enjoy the art style and the music that that's accompanied by. So I was very very impressed by the game overall. Um, so yeah, I'm still I th I'm still sort of that that overwhelmed by everything that's sort of being thrown at me. Um, examples of some of the levels were brilliantly designed um the the 3d uh playing when it gets transferred into the 2d levels during some of the stages is fantastically done um i would play like a 2d version of mario like that the the updated sounds the retro vibes the looks the costumes that you wear actually transfer into 2d as well and that was a that was great to see too so there's just so much content. And I think in terms of um, that big question, do I think it's better than Breath of the Wild? And I think the question that I ask myself is, uh, which game pushed the the series further along or reinvigorated or were the most uh, innovative? I still think Zelda is probably... Um, just a couple, two or three steps better than Odyssey. I think Mario still retains a lot of his old moves and that and sort of remixes into new ways with Cappy. But I think Zelda is better in terms of it really did throw out the whole rule book. They got rid of your real traditional dungeons. Um, they threw away certain items. You could literally go anywhere in the world that you that you liked. So, but but in terms of that, these games are real modern day masterpieces. So if you're a Mario fan, you're going to absolutely enjoy this game. Go out and buy the game. That is what I'm absolutely su suggesting. Um, from the world to the music to the gameplay, the, the controls, the kingdoms, even the post content will have you buzzing for m weeks and months to go playing this game. So we'll head back to the Nintendo Ninja News desk and we'll see what that final score is.
So we're back at the end of the review and hopefully I covered most stuff for that because I normally don't like to reveal everything in terms of um, you know what you expect to see and things like that and enemies and stuff like that because you will discover that if you buy this game. But at the end of the day, I will have to give this a 10 out of 10. And I would give Breath of the Wild 10 out of 10 too. Um, I enjoyed it far more than the 3D world. Um, Sunshine, what little bit of that game I ever played, I enjoyed far, far more. Mario 64, I was not a huge fan of. Um, I bought Banjo-Kazooie during the N64 years. And I enjoyed it more because it had a bit of a storyline to it. And lucky for me, Mario Odyssey had a good little storyline that I could get behind and enjoy quite well. And... With the Mario Galaxy games, do I think it's better than Mario Galaxy? Um, I don't think it had the sort of complete wow factor um, that Galaxy did. I think there was something a little magical about it. Maybe because it was set out in space and I'm, you know, science fiction fantasy writer person who likes that type of stuff. But yeah, I think they sit very, very much on par with the Galaxy series. Um... But yes, I really enjoyed this game a lot, and it's a 10 out of 10 game, it's a must-have game, and I think it pretty much stands equal to Mario Galaxy 1 and 2, or a little higher based on some of the mechanics you can do, and um, how evolved and massively open world some of these places are, and a lot of things for you to collect and get. So, that's it for me, and I shall see you later on. It's a 10 out of 10.